Alright, hello everyone. I want to do a second example with the measures of dispersion, the range, and all of that. But in this in this case, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to start with the measures of central tendency, and then moving on to the range, the measures of dispersion, interquartile range, and the semi-interquartile range. Now, know, know that whenever you're sitting the CXC or any quiz. They will not ask you guys to do everything. They're just going to ask you to do specific ones that they want. And then, but in this case, we're going to do everything so you guys can see how it is done. Right? So, we want to take a look at the data. data. In this case, we have that a certain person got the following quiz grades. Right? And then we have the person that six four five five three two four and eight and then what do we want to do with this we want to do we want to solve for one measures of Central tendency to the range three measures of dispersion and then four we have to we want to find the IQR which is the interquartile the interquartile range and then lastly we want to also take a look at the semi interquartile range right if you don't know about this ones take a look at the previous videos when it comes to this and then you will know what they mean right so first thing you want to do is find the measures of central tendency in terms of the measures of central tendency we want to find the one so let me just quickly back this off and i want to say one measures of central tendency or central tendency we want to find what is the mean first for the mean we know that the formula is x bar right or that x with a line on top of it means mean and then it equals to the summation of x over n summation this e looking thing is summation of x over n and then n is the number of numbers let's find what's n and in this case we just take our numbers and we count how many we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so n is thirteen so what we're going to see is we're going to say all right it is a summation of six plus four plus five plus five plus four plus nine and let me put that 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 because it's going to continue adding 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 and then i'm going to say plus eight which is everything right add everything in here until you reach to eight and you stop over 13. why is it 13 because 13 is the number of numbers that we have there okay so what you want to do now is we want to find what is the addition of all those numbers. In this case, we're going to use our calculator to solve for those, which is going to be 6 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus, and then that's going to be 9, and 9 and 4, which is going to be 13. So we're going to say plus 13. Then we're going to say... 8 and 6 that's going to be plus 14 and we move on 7 and 3 that's 10 so it's going to be plus 10 right then 8 9 10 and then 4 more that's going to be 14 for this so that's going to be plus 14 that I'm going to enter in my calculator once I do that then I get an answer of 71 divided by 13 
so 71 divided by 13 again I use my calculator divide by 13 and then divide when I divide by 13 I get an answer of 5.46 and there you have it that's the mean you add all, of, all the numbers divided by the amount of numbers that you have and then this is what we get right moving on we want to look at the mode the mode is the number that appears the most in this case we have the two appears one we have the three appears uh, let's say that's one again so if you notice the, the two and the three can't be because they only appear once and then we're moving on to four four appears one two three times so somehow i have a feeling that four might be the answer and nine appears one time right you don't have to do all of this whenever you're doing your work but in this case i'm just trying to show you that if you notice two appears once three appear once four appears three times which means it's the most five appears two times it is not the most most right so for the mode we're going to say that my answer is going to be four it is a unimodal because there was only one number that appears three times which was the most so it's a unimodal and then I'll just put by three times it appeared three times right all right we want to continue and that's the mean mode we want to find out the median in terms of the median first thing we need to do we need to put it in ascending order from smallest to biggest right if we put it from smallest to biggest we will have two right and i'll just follow from this side here notice that it's going to be two one time three one time four three times eight two times and then you have one line right so that's what we have so to find the median one in one out one in one out in one out one in one out one in one out one in one out and we end up with five so five is the median right and that is what we have so that's going to be for the measures of central tendency We want to move on, let's quickly move on to what we have next. We want to find what is the range. So moving on, we have the range. What is the range? The range is the largest entry minus smallest number. So what was the largest entry? The largest entry is a nine. And then the smallest entry is a two. So that's going to be 9 minus 2, which gives us an answer of 7. So that is what we have. The dispersions. Let's take a look at the dispersions. The dispersions. So let's plus 2, 3, dispersion. And then we want to take a look at the the Q1, Q2, and Q3, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and the middle quartile. Um, once you're doing the dispersion, you have to put it in ascending order, just like the median. So what I'm going to do is just copy this down here. So that's going to be 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 
seven, eight, eight, nine, right? That's what we have here. It's already in ascending order, so I just copied from there. All right, so now keep in mind that what I said that the median and the Q2, which is the middle quartile, are the same. That's the previous example that we did or the other video that you had. So in terms of the middle quartile, it's going to be similar to what we did for the median. We're going to go one in, one out, all the way to the middle, right? We have that this is Q2, which we also call middle quartile, which we also call the median, right? Which is the answer that we got here. So notice that you will be getting the same answer. And then here we will see equals to five. Right? So if you have if you have already found the median, there's no need for you to find it again. But in this case, we need for we need to find it because we're going to find be finding the lower quartile and the upper quartile as well. So, but you can notice that they are the same answer: five here and five down here. Right? So let's move on. We want to continue with the lower quartile. The lower quartile is Q1, and then so we got it from. We are going to get it from the lower half, and we're going to say one in, one out, one in, one out. Now notice that you get two numbers. Whenever you get two numbers, then you need to find the average of those two numbers. So we're going to say this is Q1, which is the lower quartile, right? Which is the lower quartile, I'll just put lower Q, lower quartile. And then since we got two numbers, we need to say four plus four divided by two. Our final answer is four. Now that is because you get two four, but if you get two different numbers, you will add those two different numbers and divide by two and get an answer here, right? Let's take a look at the upper half. With the upper half, we have one in, one out, one in, one out, and notice that we get a seven and an eight. That's going to be Q3, that's upper quartile, which is going to be two, a seven and an eight, but we cannot have a seven and an eight. So we need to find the average. So that's going to be seven plus eight divided by two, which is 7.5. So notice a four here because they're the same numbers, different numbers, you might even get a decimal, right? So that is what we have. Now, we need to find what is the interquartile range and the semi-interquartile range. So what I will do is I'll just do it here on the space that I have up here, so IQR. The IQR is Q3 minus Q1, right? Which is going to be Q3 is 7.5 minus Q1 which is going to be four. 7.5 minus four, 3.5, right? If I'm not mistaken, 3.5. And that is not what we have for our IQR. Notice that it doesn't take a lot of space. It doesn't have a lot of working. So it's quite easy to put it in a little space that you have, right? And then the last one, we have the S, I Q R and in this case it is going to be Q3 minus Q1 over 2 over 2 because it is semi it is half of it now we already have what is Q3 minus Q1 Q3 minus Q1 is 3.5 so we just need to divide by 2 
and if we divide by 2 that is going to be 1.75